Good morning. My name is Pastor Mike Staub, and our church is Way of New Life Ministries, and you can find us on the web um, at wayofnewlifeministries.org, and we post our messages once a week on under the name of Pittsburgh Preacher Man. So we welcome you today, and many of you have seen and heard what's been happening with Israel being attacked and we just ask and pray and solicit your prayers for Israel for the peace of Jerusalem for we all know that Israel is God's time clock and they are the apple of his eye and we Christians are grafted in and they are our brothers and sisters so we just solicit your prayers for them today as God has drawn each of us closer to him to guide us through these times that we live. And today we'll be dealing with Isaiah 53, verse 6. And that reads, All we like sheep have gone astray. And I want to stop right there. When we read uh, this in Isaiah, we know that Jesus references Isaiah in his ministry more than once and we also see him reference in other books of the Bible I think he references I think eight different books of the Bible when he walks God himself the word made flesh and throughout the word and we when we look at his ministry he references us many times to being like sheep and he the good shepherd so we want to take a moment to look at that and try to understand why he references us to sheep. Okay, so I'm going to read a couple different scriptures. We can read Matthew 9, 36, that reads that. Just let me turn to it. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. We can also read in Matthew 25, well, let me go back to John 10, 27. Sorry to jump around like this on you, but John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. <clears throat> we can read <clears throat> Psalm 23, 1. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Isaiah 40, 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. And, those, and there's other ones. So what do we know about sheep? Well, the one thing about sheep is they don't have any direction. And as we go through these different aspects of sheep, I want you to consider yourself in the midst of this. And most importantly, where the good shepherd is in the midst of these different aspects of our life. For example, when we're looking for direction, how often are we in that position of looking for direction in our lives? And how we need that direction. And how often um, do we see, you ever hear that saying, the blind leading the blind? Like when you see sheep, when you study them, they they like to follow one another in the flock. And we see that in the world that we live.
they will follow whoever's leading them, whether they're good or bad. And there's a lot of bad people out there that are leading a lot of sheep in the wrong direction. Through their lies, their deceit. And there's so many people out there that don't realize or understand it. And they're just following them into all that darkness. And all the lies and, and all the, the traps that are out there. And we know that sheep have a tendency to stray. To stray away from the flock. To do their own thing whether it's good or bad. We see that there's been, you read stories about how a farmer had a flock of sheep in his barn and he tied a rope across the exit. When he opened up the door, the first five or six sheep jumped across the rope and then he cut the rope and dropped it. But because the first five or six sheep jumped over it, the rest of the flock, when they came out, jumped as if the rope was still there. So we see it many times people follow other people, whether it's sometimes they're afraid to break away from the peer group because they're afraid people are going to talk about them. They want to go with the crowd. We see that happening all the time where people just want to go with the crowd. They want to be accepted. We see trends in our lives. Remember when the Beatles came and they had the long hair and then long hair was the trend and everybody was out getting long hair. <coughs> and everyone wanted to be a hippie at a certain point. And then trends change. The second thing we want to cover is well, let me add one more thing about direction. One thing about sheep is their wool grows and if the shepherd doesn't trim it around their eyes, they can't see. And that's why it's important, once again, that we connect with the good shepherd. That's why it's important to fellowship. That's why it's important to read the word and to pray so that we can enter into his presence so the Holy Spirit can trim your lamps or trim the wool around your eyes so that you can see. It helps you to, uh, he helps you to get to focus and not be blinded by the things that are happening in your life. That's why it's so important to have a relationship with the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. And that's why it's, Good to put roots down in a church where God can minister to you in that church. The second thing is sheep are defenseless. They don't have horns and you don't hear them growling. The only thing they can do is run. And maybe the mother will try to kick you if you try to interfere with her children, but that's about as far as it goes. But that's another reason why we need the good shepherd to protect us from evil. That's why he talks about putting up a hedge around us. That's why he asks us to stay in his flock and not stray away from the flock. We understand that the Lord, that we need the Lord to protect us spiritually because there are forces out there, but he's defeated those forces. And when we don't have him, when we're not connected with him to protect us, we can be attacked and, and influenced in a very negative way because we're not protected. Our family's not protected. Bad things start to happen that should not happen. If you've been wandering away from the shepherd, you can, you, it's good to, to seek him, to present yourself to him so he can minister to you. The third thing is sheep cannot get up without help if they fall on their back. 
than you might find that to be true when somebody maybe hurts you seriously, whether it's with their words, with their actions, with their rejection. And that hurt festers and it's almost like you're a turtle on your back and you can't get up, you can't shake it. You can't shake those words. And without the help of the Good Shepherd, that's going to put you in a vulnerable position to be attacked. And that's the other, another reason why we need the Good Shepherd is to get us back up on our feet. And how many times does that happen in our lives? Those of us that have had a relationship with the Lord knows that it took the Lord to get me back up on my feet. It took that grace from heaven. We're talking spiritually and physically. Yeah, I know if you fall on your back, you can get up. I'm talking spiritually. When somebody really steps on you in life. And how many people out there are still on their backs with their feet dangling in the air because they haven't been able to put back up and onto their feet? And we find them turning to other devices in life because they can't seem to get back up again. It's like they've fallen into a ditch in life. You become easy for prey, you can be left behind. And how many people feel left behind because they made a wrong turn in life? They feel like they're stuck on their back with their feet dangling in the air. They need the good shepherd to come and put them back up on their feet and to minister to them. Sheep can't, when if they get wounded, they don't lick their wounds. They can't heal themselves. Like you see a dog that gets hurt, you see them licking his wound. Other mammals, you see them licking their wounds. Sheep don't lick their wounds. They can't help them. They need a shepherd to minister to that wound. Otherwise, they will continue to be sick. We find that with sheep where when they wander off, they're going to many times get into bad grass that makes them sick. And how do we see that in the world today? The people are eating things spiritually, mentally, and many times even physically that are making them sick. Sheep are emotional. They recognize the shepherd's voice. That's a good thing. That's what brought you here today. You have a conscious mind and you have convictions. Your, his laws are written on your heart. And a stranger you will not follow. Where we lack direction, we make up for it in recognizing the, the shepherd's voice to discern between good and evil. Between his voice and the voice of the world. Those that are lost that have never came into contact with the good shepherd or have invited him into their heart are lost. They're following all kinds of different voices. They don't have a relationship with the good shepherd. We can read in the scriptures where a shepherd would take his sheep out on the backside of a mountain where there was nobody else, just him, just his voice, so that the sheep would learn that voice and get familiar with that voice. So that when they got into a crowd or in the public or with other flocks as they went back into the town, they would know his voice. And that's the importance of having a, a prayer life, having a prayer closet, having a relationship with God, your good shepherd, so that you can get acquainted with his voice in your life. However that might be, however he might minister and speak to you which could be a number of different ways. It could be through the written word. It could be through the spoken word. It could be through dreams, through visions. It could be through your environment or your circumstances. 
He knows you. He created you. And if you're watching by video and you've never invited him into your heart to be Lord of your life, yes, we're taught God is a spirit and he, you, can un, you can receive him in your heart. You can experience his presence in your life as, he asked, as you ask him to forgive you your sins, to bring you into the flock of God so you're not lost, so you're not eating bad grass, so you can, he can pick you up when you get hurt. He can protect you from the wolf and from evil, occurrences that are out there. In life, we get surprises, we get curveballs, there's failures, and it can knock us off our feet. But there's the good shepherd to pick you back up again. Sheep are not meant to carry burdens. They're not like a donkey. If you put a burden on a sheep, it's not going to work. And neither are you created to carry burdens. You were formed in the image and likeness in God. You were created on the seventh day, the day of rest, when God formed you from the dust. You were made to live in the freedom. Jesus said, cast your cares upon me. He said, come to me, all you that are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. We can read that in 1 Peter and Psalms 55 to cast our burdens up upon him. Sheep will settle for less. If they're thirsty and there's clear, good water 20 feet ahead, but they come across the muddy puddle, they're going to stop and drink from the muddy puddle because they'll settle for less. And how many times in life does mankind settle for less rather than the good things that, from God, rather than waiting on God Amen. for the good things that he wants to bring into your life? And we turn to different things in our life. We may, we're looking for peace. So what do we do? Yeah. Many of us turn to drugs and alcohol or sex, out of wedlock, adultery, because we're not willing to wait. We're not willing to do it his way. So we go, rather than doing it God's way, we settle for that sin in our lives. We lack that judgment to wait for what is good. Sheep are vulnerable. but they're also very valuable. We know that in Jesus' day, the sheep provided meat, it provided milk, it provided clothing, wool. And when we read in the scriptures in Matthew, we, we read about how the shepherd will lay his life down for the sheep because of how valuable they are. We read it in Matthew 25, starting with verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all the nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. So what's the difference between a sheep and a goat? Well, goats are, can be very mean. They're completely different. They have a mind 
They're very independent. They're opinionated. They're vulgar. They're dangerous. If you get in a courtyard with a goat with the horns, he come try to ram you, okay? The, it's also used as, the goat is used as a symbol of Satan. On the last day, God divides the sheep from the goats. Now, the difference is the sheep are innocent. They're not dangerous. They're not going to charge after you. So, we see that there is a significant, they're gentle, they represent a sheep represents gentleness and innocence and purity. We also read about, there's a famous picture of a lamb that's on the shepherd's shoulder and we see a bandage around the leg. And that story, that picture has a story behind it where a shepherd, if a sheep keeps wandering off from the flock, keeps going into bad grass, what the shepherd does is he'll break the leg of the lamb and then he'll mend it, he'll wrap it up, but he'll put the lamb on his shoulder. So the lamb gets to be more familiar with his voice and with his scent because so he gets familiar. So in life, many times we find ourselves going through a difficult time. Not every difficult time is from the devil. Sometimes it's from God speaking to us saying, hey, you're going down the wrong road. And he puts up a roadblock for you. And it's almost like him breaking one of our legs. We might find ourselves for one reason or another going through a very difficult time for a specific reason, to get our attention. All of a sudden, our money's drying up. Lord, what's going on? Or maybe our health starts to deteriorate. And how many times when things start to go bad do we find people coming back to church to find out what's going on? Well, everything's going fine, hunky-dory. They're fine. They, you don't see them, many people. As soon as things start getting rough and tumbly and things are happening, they come back. And that's many times God will use our circumstances to get our attention. He'll put up stop signs in our lives to get our attention, to teach us a lesson so that we get more closer to him. And then when he puts us back down, when our leg is mended, when we start to stray, all he has to do is take his staff and just tap the foot. Do you remember what happened? God, I don't want to go down that road. I don't want to go down into that depression or that oppression, into that evil. I made a mistake. I jumped over the fence when I shouldn't have. I'm married, and I went with that other woman or that other man, and that led into all kinds of difficulties in my life, and I ain't doing that again. Or I got drunk and I ain't doing that again. Amen. Amen. Or I went down to the casino and I spent my paycheck. And my wife got so upset with me, she was going to divorce me, but I ain't doing that again. There's different things. Now, as we start to look at ourselves, here's the good news is we read in Matthew 18, 10 through 14, read about the good shepherd who was willing to leave the 90 and nine to go find us, to go find the one that is straight. And we read that in Matthew 18, 10. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye if a man have a hundred sheep 
and one of them be gone astray? Doth he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seeketh that which is gone astray? And this is the main message that I want to bring to you is that with this message, you may find that maybe you've strayed a little bit or maybe you've strayed far or maybe you have no relationship whatsoever. And that's why you have no direction. That's why you can't seem to get back up on your feet. That's why you keep getting attacked by evil because there's a separation between you and your good shepherd. And he wants to cuddle you. He wants to carry you in his bosom. He wants to put a hedge around you. As he said, I, a good shepherd dies for the sheep, which he died on the cross for us to give us that protection, to give us that grace to be able to do all the things that we're enabled to be done. And when we do stray, he has so much love for you that he will come after you to seek you out. But always remember, there's a choice that you have. You may have had your leg broken more than once in life by the Good Shepherd to teach us a lesson, to wake us up to the reality, to truth. And that we don't want to have to make him make us go through that kind of a life to teach us hard lessons. Some of us have to go through the hard lesson. We just won't listen. We just won't take his word for what it says or his, or his spoken word or his warning in our life. There is a, a person, I'm not going to name who they are, that, that it was a family member in my life, okay, that I... The only thing that worked with him was a two by four, okay? That's how you got through to him, okay? They just, there was no common sense. You had, they had to learn the hard way. And see, the Lord says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. He says, come unto me, ye that are heavy laden and burdened. If you're walking around life with all these burdens on you, that it isn't made, you, haven't, you weren't made to do that. The cross that he that you're supposed to carry, or the your his your burden should be light because you're yoked with him. He's helping you carry it. Again, that connection with God. Your connection with your good shepherd, Jesus Christ. So in the world that we live, <clears throat> there's a many lost sheep out there. And there's a song that was created back in 1909 in Yale. And it was called uh, Whiffin Poof, Whiffin Poof's Song. Okay, that's the name of that group. Okay. And part of the song is how it went, is we were poor little lambs who have lost their way. Ba, ba, ba. We're little black sheep who have gone astray. Ba, ba, ba. And some of the words that go in this song, I'll start from the beginning, is to the tables down at Maury's, that's the bar, to the place where Louis dwells, to the dear old temple bar we love so well. There are many lost sheep, a many hurt sheep, and many unprotected sheep sitting out there on our streets that with the drugs and with the alcohol and the bars looking for relief. Sing the whiff and poofs assembled with their glasses raised on high and the magic of their singing cast its spell. Yes, the magic of their singing of the songs we love so well. Shall I wasting and moverin and the rest we will Serenade our Louis while mm -hmm. life and voice shall last. Then we'll pass and be forgotten with the rest. Lost. Forgotten. And it goes back in more poor little lambs who have lost their way. And that song still sung today in many different circles. People lamenting about being lost in life. 
and looking for answers. So today I would encourage you, each and every one of us, seek your good shepherd. Because this is how we're made. We need him. You need him. Because you were made for him. You were made on the seventh day of rest. You were made to live in peace, in joy, to be in his flock, where he can lead you to good grass, and not that you're out there eating bad grass and getting sick in life. And that could be mentally sick, that could be physically or spiritually sick. He's the one that will lead you in the paths of righteousness and protect you and your family. So Lord, we pray today. We pray, Lord, to be open to you, the Good Shepherd. We pray, Lord, to stay close to you during these tumultuous times that we live in. That you may direct us. That you may comfort us and take care of us, to feed us. Lord, to help us. Lord, to mend our, our, our wounds, Lord. To lead us beside those still waters, Lord, where there's peace, where the water's clear and pure. Lord, that we may live in your righteousness and in your peace and in your joy and in your goodness. That we may be protected from all evil and be provided for by your hands. For we ask all these things, Father, in the holy and precious name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming and God bless you. T, where in the heck have you been? T, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tell you a story about T. Can I tell the story? Sure. How she came, you're from Kenya, right? Malawi. Malawi. And she was here with a green card to get married. And that got uh, delayed. He got sick or something. And Homeland Security was going to send her back to, what's the name of the person? Malawi. Malawi, okay. And someone asked, mentioned her to come up here to pray. And up here, you find Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. And she put a prayer request in the prayer request. <clears throat> oh, I'm telling this on, well, I should tell it online. <laughs> put a prayer in a prayer request um, for her to get her green card and to be able to stay here and work. And what was it, a month or two? Yeah. She got this letter. Rather than being shipped back to Malawi, uh, she got her green card to stay, and then she got married, right? And how many kids? Two. Two. <laughs> and she got a job, and you live out in Baldwin, right? That's right. And God just straightened her whole thing out. So <laughs> we want to thank God for you. And it's good to see you back again. Thank you. Let me turn the camera off, <clears throat> and then we can talk. Yeah. <clears throat>